May 19th, 2015 meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the City of Troy to order. Before we proceed, I'd just like to make some uh, simple introductions for the public that may be here or, uh, or watching at home tonight as to the parties up here at the dais. Uh, to my left, your right, is uh, Dave Lambert, who's a member of the board. To his right is uh, Dave Eisenbacher, who is the vice chairman of this board. To his right is Mr. Sanzica, who is the planning commission's liaison on our board, but he's a full member here as well. And I'm Glenn Clark, I'm the chairman. To my right is uh, Mr. Desmond. And to his right is uh, Mr. McCowan, who is an alternate of this board, and he is sitting in place of a full member. He will be voting as a full member here this evening. And to the far right is Mr. Courtney. Uh, on the side here is Mr. Evans, who is the city administration's liaison to the board. And to the, at the very end is Ms. Dufresne, who is um, our legal advisor. She's an assistant city attorney for the city of Troy. And she'll, she'll serve as an advisor to the board here tonight. And I am going to then now ask Mr. Eisenbacher, the vice chairman, to read the rules and procedures uh, for, the, for information for the general public. Thank you. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a group of seven of your neighbors appointed by the Troy City Council to, to decide on requests for variances and other matters that are brought before them. A variance is a relaxation of the literal provisions of the zoning ordinance. Petitioners must indicate a hardship or practical difficulty with the land that would warrant the granting of the variance. Our procedure. The board will hear the items in the order they appear on the agenda. When an item is called, the chairman will verify that the petitioner is present. Then the city ad administration will summarize the facts of the case. The petitioner will then grant, be given an opportunity to address the board to explain the justification for the action requested. After the petitioner makes their presentation and answers any questions that the board may have, the chairman will open the public hearing. Any person wishing to speak on the request should raise their hand and when recognized by the chairman, come up to the podium and sign in on the sheet provided. The speaker should identify themselves with name and address, indicate their relationship to the property in question, for example, next door neighbor, live behind the property, etc., and state whether they are in favor or against the variance request and give reasons for their opinion. Comments must be directed through the chairman. Comments should be kept as brief as possible and closely pertain to the matter under consideration. Only one person will be recognized by the chairman to speak at one time. At the conclusion of the public comments, the chairman will close the public hearing. Once the public hearing is closed, no other public comment will be taken unless in response to a specific question by a member of the board. The board will then take, make a motion to approve, deny, or postpone the request. In order for a request to pass, a minimum of four votes are needed. If the request is not granted, the applicant has the right to appeal the board's decision to the Oakland County Circuit Court. Thank you, Vice Chairman Eisenbacher. Mr. Evans, could you please call the roll? Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Courtney. Here. Mr. Desmond. Here. Mr. Eisenbacher. Here. Mr. McCown. Here. Mr. Lambert. Here. Mr. Sanzica. Here. So we have a quorum to operate tonight, and we also have a full board. Moving forward, item number two is approval of the minutes. Are there any questions by a member of the board related to the minutes as presented? Hearing that, oh, Mr. Sanzica. Oh, no, I was just uh, moved. Please. The approval of the agenda, or the uh, minutes. The second. There's been a um, motion by Sanzica and Desmond to approve the minutes. Are there any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, Mr. Evans, I believe we're prepared to vote. Mr. Courtney. Yes. Mr. Desmond. Yes. Mr. Eisenbacher. Yes. Mr. McCown. Yes. Mr. Lambert. Yes. Mr. Sanzica. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Now moving on to item number three, which is the agenda. Uh, as presented to the board, and this is for questions for the board members as to what was uh, presented to them. Hearing none, that our agenda is set for this evening and, uh, as it was published for the public to review as well. Moving to hearing of cases, we have item number A, <coughs> excuse me, which is a variance request related to Linda Pierre Felice, I think I hopefully did that French, uh, good French name uh, justice, related to 3151 Helena. 
Mr. Evans, could you please present to the board? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll direct everybody's attention to the overheads to the left, right, and behind the board. Uh, the subject property is located in a neighborhood north of East Big Beaver and east of Livernoy Road. This is a close-up of the neighborhood. The property is at 3151 Helena, is located on the southwest corner of Helena and Heartland. And as indicated by the yellow overlay, the subject property and all surrounding property is zoned R1E, single family residential. The applicant proposes to construct an addition to the east side of their home. In this area, I've shown the approximate location of the addition in blue. This is what the east side of their home looks like as looking at it from Helena. And that's what the front elevation is proposed to look like. Now they provided us a sketch plan and uh, what their sketch plan shows that the addition will be set back 23 feet, four inches from the front property line along Helena. The zoning ordinance requires that that addition be set back 25 feet. So they're seeking a variance tonight of less than two feet. I'll turn it back over to the board for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Are there any questions of Mr. Evans? Mr. Sanzico. I was just curious, since the house is on the corner lot, are, are, with the, um, with the, uh, you, you might consider the either side of the home a front well, actually, setback. Well, actually, yeah, the zoning ordinance would actually require uh, or consider both of them fronts. So they'd have to maintain with any additions the 25-foot setback from both streets. Thank you. Any other questions or comments <clears throat> by a board member? Mr. Courtney. They would need a, a variance if they went in from the side then. From the north side? Yes. I'm gonna take a close look at the uh, sketch plan. They may have indicated also the setback from that. No, they're over 25 feet from that. Okay. Yeah. Any other members? Hearing none, we'll call the petitioner forward. And if you could please sign in. <clears throat> and then identify yourself and your relationship to the property and any other parties that you have standing with you who may want to present to the board. Mm -hmm. Good evening. My name is Linda Pierfelice. I am the homeowner at 3151 Helena. Oops. Can you hear me? I'm the homeowner of 3151 Helena, and I would like to put a sunroom on the front of my home, asking for less than two feet variance to accomplish that. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Um, well, I submitted my application, and um, the reason we're not doing it on the side is the living room is so small, we'd have to put a door in the living room to enter the sunroom on the side. And I think eventually, in years to come, we may expand that living room on the side just as a living room, not a sunroom. Okay. So we just rather have it on the front. Okay. Sir, do you have anything to add? Would you like to identify, identify yourself, please? Hi, my name is James Horn, and I live at 3151 Helena, same address. Um, and looking at uh, uh, the houses along the street, um, I went down the street and measured the houses, the existing houses that were there. The one house right to the south of me, 3131, um, it sticks out actually um, almost 10 feet more than my home at this time. And with the addition on the front of it, the 10 foot addition, our house would stick out three inches farther than theirs, but um, they have a six by 12 deck off the front of their house also. So as far as looking out of place with the houses going up and down the street, we measured a few houses through there and all in a line, and they're all less than 25 feet to this, to this um, 
the street. Okay. Uh, do any of the our members have questions for these petitioners? Mr. Lambert. Just one quick question. Are you the original owners of the home or did you purchase it in the past few no, years? No, I purchased it four years ago. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for members? Okay. If you could have a seat, please. Okay. Thank you. So at this point in time, I'm going to call the public hearing on this uh, variance request open. So if there are any members of the public who would like to come in forward and address the board, please do so at this time at the uh, podium, please. And seeing that there aren't anyone, there isn't anyone coming forward, we're gonna close the public hearing and bring it back to the board for comments, questions, or action. Mr. Evans. Yes, and I'd just like to- uh, Oh, please. To the attention of the board as part of the uh, public hearing, uh, staff received an email from the residents at 3245 Talbot in support of the request. Very good. And Mr. Eisenbacher, do you have <coughs> any anything else to report on that front? That was the only one. Okay, very good. Mr. Courtney. How far away is that? Let me check on the aerial. I think it's the street immediately east. Yeah, so. and then. It, right. Yeah, and then over. It must have been, it must be within the range of the uh, notice, though. We can take a look just to be uh, accurate here. That's what I was looking for. Thirty-two forty-five Talbot is on the north side of Heartland, one block east. It's actually the second house up from the intersection of Heartland and Talbot, so uh, very likely within the uh, 300, okay. 300 foot radius. That's what I was wondering if they were within the notice. Yeah, they're definitely within the uh, neighborhood. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, any other members wishing to be heard? Mr. Lambert. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to uh, have a little bit of concern about the proposal because when I drove by it, the house looks relatively small compared to the property, but I do see some some constraints on the property. Number one, the the, uh, the fact that it's on a corner, and number two, the way the house is laid there, and the fact that it's only a, a two-foot variance based upon those considerations and the fact there's no objection to anyone in the uh, immediate neighborhood, I would move that we approve the variance. Second. So motion of approval by Lambert and second by Mr. McC uh, McCown. And uh, so the motion is properly before us. Are there any comments or uh, by members on the motion for approval? Hearing none, Mr. Evans, I believe we're prepared to vote. Mr. Desmond. Yes. Mr. Eisenbacher. Yes. Mr. McCown. Yes. Mr. Lambert. Yes. Mr. Sanzica. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Courtney. Yes. Motion is approved. Congratulations, you have your variance. Have a good evening. Item number B, variance request related to Timothy and Carol Judy, related to 2352 Lan <coughs> Lanner again, and I would like to call Mr. Evans to present to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, I'll direct everyone's attention to the monitors uh, to the left, right, and behind the board. Uh, the subject property is located north of West Big Beaver and east of Adams Road. It's more specifically on the north side of Lanergan, the second house from the eastern end of Lanergan at 2352. And everything you see in the yellow overlay represents single family residential zoning which includes the subject property and all properties in the area. Now they provided us a sketch plan of their proposed addition and in this drawing lantern is at the bottom. Everything you see in blue is going to encroach into the required 40 foot front yard setback. Now the uh, closest the proposed addition gets to the front yard, front property line rather is 32 feet eight inches. So they're requesting a variance of less than seven feet six inches in order to proceed with this proposal. They have provided us some elevations. I'll turn it over to the board for any questions. Are there any questions of Mr. Evans at this time? 
Seeing none, we'll call the petitioner forward or the petitioner's representative. Please sign in and identify yourself and your relationship to the property. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Tim Judy, I'm the land uh, property owner, 23 year resident of that same property, so been here a long time and, and know it well. Um, our request, I think, uh, was pretty thorough. I'm sure you've seen the application. We spent a lot of time and money getting to this point, so uh, we were hoping things go well. But the, really the things that we focused on were the five points of the practical difficulty. And um, as you know, the, we're situated on the curve there at the corner of Salem and Lanergan, um, and, it, and it makes the, the property in which we can actually build in uh, an odd shape due to the, due to the curve that we have which is an extended curve, which I believe the developer probably did to get in one more lot versus a 90 degree curve, because that's a, it's a common trick by developers to get in more, more homes. But our, it, it also sets our house back. What is not shown on that drawing is that the corner of our current garage is set right in that, uh, in that corner as close as it can be to the existing property line. So anything we would do, uh, we've looked at going above the garage or uh, you know, backwards, it's all, it's all predicated on that one corner of the garage, the current corner of the garage, where it's really anchored to that current 40-foot setback. Um, the, in looking at the practical difficulty, um, my wife couldn't be here tonight. She's at the uh, Troy, Troy High band orientation. My daughter's in the marching band, and so she couldn't be here. But we, we looked at the five, you know, tried to document the, the practical difficulty statements. We believe that we not only meet a few of those, but we meet all five of those. I think the exceptional characteristics, the odd shape of the lot, really gives us a limited, uh, limited space which to build, build in. Um, the, the vegetation, we do have a, a very large tree. I don't know if any of you visited the property, um, but we actually, when we met with the architect, we tried to anchor the furthest east wall of the garage to not go any further uh, east because we were afraid we would kill that tree, which is probably over 200 years old, uh, and, and we really don't want to disrupt that. And so we kind of anchored that point as, as far east as we wanted to go, whereas you can see, uh, with the with the actual setback, we could go another 10 or 15 feet to the east, but we we didn't want to do that because we don't want to run the risk of killing that tree or having to the expense of having to take it out. Um, so we kind of anchored it by which that's currently the edge of our driveway. So we started with a design point that we didn't want to go any further east of that and risk that uh, uh, having damage there. Um, on, on the uh, the other points on point B. The, the dimensions is obviously the dimension of the curve, which, which directly impacts our property uh, in that location. The, uh, the bullet point C of a personal nature, there's nothing personal. We're, we're the homeowners. We've been there a long time. Um, item D, the uh, um, difficulty was really not created by ourselves or the, or the previous owner. The difficulty is really the curve. If it were, I think, in one of the drawings that I put in the package, if you can see, if it were, uh, you know, if we weren't not on the curve, we would be well within, within the 40-foot setback of the, of a property if it were a rectangular lot versus a, a curved lot. And then item E, I think that the, the essential character, the elevations we provided, you know, we did an extension on the back of the house in 2005. Um, the architecture is very traditional, very colonial. Um, the, the, the elevations that we're working on in the front of the house would maintain. We're not building an ultra-modern or ultra-contemporary or something that would really deviate from the other homes in the neighborhood. Um, and as far as the uh, supply of light, air, uh, safety factors, increased congestion, uh, congestion, any of the items mentioned in bullet point E, we don't think we create any, any difficulty related to those or, or any safety concerns for ourselves or our neighbors. So again, as I said, I think that we, we not only meet one or two of the items, but I believe we meet all five of the items that are set forth in the practical difficulty statements uh, for, the, for the requested variance. Very good. So the addition to the home has nothing to do with the practice space for the Troy High marching band? No, no, it might be in the garage <laughs> for my daughter anyway, but Even no. Even though Mr. Lambert is a 
Athens parent, I'm sure he's going to give you a very fair hearing here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time, I'd like to call on board members who have questions or comments on the uh, variance request for the other petitioner, Mr. Courtney. Yes, did you, uh, you have that movement of the garage. If it wasn't trying to meet the very, <laughs> meet with as small a variance, would you have still made that uh, shift to the garage? Or would you? I, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Would you have the, would you have the garage closer to the road if you didn't have to uh, have a variance? Um, I, I'm, I'm not okay, sure. Okay, you've got, you've got the garage offset. Yes. Would you still do that with or without a variance? Oh, the way it's designed there now? Yeah. Yeah, because actually the front portion of that, if you, in the, in the, in the plan is actually a, a hallway which allows us to go access from the garage across right. the front of the house into the existing house. So in, in shifting the whole property back, the, it becomes very difficult to get access from the garage okay. um, for, for my wife and, you know, we wanted to have access to be able to go from the garage to the house without having to go outside. Yeah. So there's a hallway that runs across the front of that, the, the addition that, that would have access to the garage so we could walk through that hallway into the existing part of the home uh, without having to go outside. So that's what's driving that offset. Okay, it's just really not, it really is just uh, to be able to provide that walkway through the, through the front of the house. I just uh, wanted to make sure that shift wasn't just to minimize the uh, no, variance. No, no, that's really just, and, and also just to break up the front of the house so it's not a big long, uh, you know, big long expanse of building there uh, by setting that back. It's, I think it's a better architectural design than, uh, than having it consistent all the way across the front. Thank you. Yeah. Any other members? Seeing none, if you can have a seat, uh, sir. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. And we are now going to uh, have the uh, public hearing on this item. So I'll open the public hearing. If there's a member of the public who would like to address the board on this matter, please come forward to the podium and identify yourself. See that there, there is not a person who would like to share their comments on this. I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. The first uh, Vice Chairman Eisenbacher, could you please update us if there are any communications on there this matter? There is one communication on this matter, which was from. Two three three six Langergan, immediately east of the uh, subject property. So one of the two most adjacent or most uh, impacted neighbors uh, said yes. I guess looking at that curve, they'd also be looking at the house from their uh, from their front windows. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, and, Mr. Evans. Uh, the planning office received a comment very late today in the day, so I didn't make copies, but a resident of Salem, about four houses away, uh, voiced support for the request as well. Thank you. So now the matter is before the board for discussion, consideration, and possible action. Is there any sure. member who would like to be? Mr. Eisenbacher. Um, I appreciate the... Uh, the list of uh, practical difficulties that the petitioner submitted to us. I do believe he is missing one insofar as the tree, not impacting the tree is an environmental concern for the item E. Um, so I'd agree with all those items that are listed, plus add one for the, uh, the environmental impact of not damaging the tree. Um, and this is definitely a irregularly shipped, shaped property insofar as he wouldn't need the variance except for that funny cutout in his front yard. The yep. flat edge of his yard he meets. I agree. Thank so you. So if no one else has any comments to bring up, I'd like to move the well, resolution. Let's okay. see if that's the case. We don't want to take action too quickly here. Are there any other comments or... Would anyone else like to be identified or recognized? Mr. Lambert. Just a, uh, an additional comment that looks like, thanks to Mr. Evans, I believe, placed on in front of us the uh, BZA uh, or ZBA minutes from 10 years ago that there was a similar request for the bad part of the house. And at that time, our colleagues who served on the board probably uh, might have only been Mr. Courtney on that at that time. 
uh, found that also at that time that there was an irregular shape to the lot, which created a hardship for the, the variance at the back part of the property. So we're looks like we're facing something similar this time, except it's in the front of the house. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, seeing that there isn't anyone else, Mr. Eisenbacher, if you'd like to make a motion. I'd like to move the resolution to grant relief of the ordinate, ordinance. Second. There's a motion by Eisenbacher and Desmond for approval of the variance request. Are there any comments on the motion before us by a member of the board? Seeing none, Mr. Evans, I believe we're prepared to vote. Mr. Eisenbacher. Yes. Mr. McCone. Yes. Mr. Lambert. Yes. Mr. Sanzica. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Courtney. Yes. Mr. Desmond. Yes. Congratulations, you have your variance. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Can I make one quick comment, Mr. Chairman? Sure. Mr. Sanzi. I just want to compliment the, the applicant for the professional job. Yeah, it was, it was, very, it was done. Good. It was very nicely yeah. done. And yep. uh, be very proud of the uh, right. your presentation. I second that from the legal perspective. I think all of our petitioners came in that prepared. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Uh, item number five uh, is communications. Mr. Evans, is there anything under this tab that we need to look at here tonight? No. Okay. Moving on to item number six, uh, miscellaneous business, election of the officers. Tonight we will be as, oh, Mr. Mr. Courtney. Yes. Is there I'm a comment? The, I'm the election. Oh, you want to make a motion. Okay, hold on one second. Tonight we'll be electing two board member, uh, officer positions for this board, the uh, vice chairman and the chairman, and Mr. Courtney is recognized. I'm... Uh completely happy with the chair and the vice chair that we have now and I'd like to unless there's other unless there are nominations I'd like to move that the chairman be reelected and the vice chairman be reelected for Second, one year. I believe you're going to have to name those individuals. Uh, Mr. Clark and Mr. Eisenbacher. As which positions? Mr. Clark as chairman, Mr. Eisenbacher as vice chairman. Thank you for being so I'll specific. Second. <laughs> uh, seconded by um, Mr. Desmond. Are, is there any uh, discussion, or is there another motion to be made by another member? Hearing none, that's a surprise. Mr. Evans, I believe we're prepared to vote for a vote. Mr. McCown. Yes. Mr. Lambert. Yes. Mr. Sanzica. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Courtney. Yes. Mr. Desmond. Yes. Mr. Eisenbacher. Yes. Congratulations to Vice Chairman Eisenbacher. It's been a pleasure working with him uh, on the board. Uh, he hasn't been uh, the vice chair for the whole full term for last term. But I know he'll do a great job. I'm sure sometime during this coming term, you're going to have a chance to chair this board uh, in my absence. So thank you, everyone. I appreciate your confidence uh, in that area. And I really do want to just uh, say, I think it, it's not spoken enough that uh, Mr. Evans does a fa fabulous job both here at the board meetings uh, supporting this board. But you know, on occasion, I have uh, need to talk to him, and he's very uh, quick to provide information, and it's just been a pleasure working with him over the many years. And Ms. Dufresne has been great to work with for the last several years as our legal advisor. So thank you both for thank you. your service to uh, the people of Troy. And at this point in time, we can move. Mr. Lambert. This is a, a question under, I guess this is being miscellaneous business. One thing I noticed, we've been kind of gotten into the practice of uh, having the chair introduce all the members of the board and also the city staff. I'm wondering if that can substitute for the actual roll call, because it seems like he goes through with the chair, introduces all the members, then we turn around and then you do the roll call. Is there uh, any reason why the introduction couldn't substitute for having to you redo the roll call again? I'm really not sure why not. I, I, I'm. To save you some time, I guess, is one. Yeah, you know, I think it really exercises the same uh, same function to identify for the record who's here. Plus, we also have video showing who's here. So uh, I just don't think it would affect accuracy. So uh, if you want to proceed that way, I don't, I don't see an issue with that. I would just say that uh, I believe this area came into being a number of years ago. Of course, my memory isn't as good as it used to be. but. I think Mr. Evans made the recommendation that we do it because the concept was that people come here usually one time. And, you know, it's kind of intimidating. We're in this big room. And so just to make them more familiar and comfortable with who everybody is, that that uh, was added in, not as a formal, we didn't, you know, pass a resolution creating that as a function of the board. 
but in addition, at that same time, we're recognizing the city staff that support the support during the official hearing. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's kind of helpful in that regard. Certainly, the nameplates help as well. So uh, you know, it's half empty, half full. I'm you know, I'm mildly in favor of keeping the status quo, but I would listen to the majority of the board on this. I just think in terms of pro forma, I think we should keep it the way it is. I understand the keeping the things moving along, but I think in terms of a st you know, the roll call is part of the agenda, just establishing you know, who's here for the record. I, I, think it, I think we should maintain the status quo. Anyone else like to comment on that? Well, maybe Mr. Lambert and I can talk about this after the meeting, well, and we'll come out with one opinion, right? I, I <laughs> always <laughs> defer to the legal counsel, and if she recommends we stick with what we're doing, that's fine with me. Okay, thank you. Um, are there other, uh, so item number seven is public comment, so we can call the public forward now. If someone's here that would like to make a comment to the board, please come forward. And so we'll close that portion out since no one came forward. And are there any other comments by the board members or the city staff at this time? This may, it's not a record meeting, but I think it's <laughs> close, because I think one time we had one that ended like 7.58 or something. That was a couple years ago. So at this point in time, I'll adjourn the meeting. Have a great evening, everyone. All right. Pro-rate our feet.